see how just how hot it is in there. It's ridiculous. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the lab. In this video, I'll be making an electric muffle furnace, which is essentially a furnace that can get to very high temperatures in a relatively small space. And it's used often in chemistry and other laboratories for performing high temperature reactions like uh, decompositions, calcinations, that sort of thing. So anyway, um, I posted this as a goal on my Patreon page, and I reached that monetary goal from all of your donations, so thank you very much to everyone who donated. And this is what I came up with. Um, it's based on a design that I noticed on uh, where was it? Instructables, actually, but it's a little bit bigger, a uh, bit different of a design. These are fire bricks, and they're rated to 2600 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like 1300-something uh, Celsius, and they're insulating, so you can see they're, they're very light and uh, chalky bricks. But uh, anyway, so the plan is to build a furnace like this out of these bricks. You'll notice I traced some pencil lines on these bricks here, and I'm going to use a Dremel tool to carve a groove uh, in that sort of U-shape right there in that brick. And what that's going to do is house a heating element. This is a piece of uh, Canthal uh, high temperature heating element wire. It's like nickel chromium and aluminum or something, or iron chromium aluminum. I'm not really sure. But anyway, I have a bit that's just the size of the Canthal. And I just finished testing it. You can see there's a plug on it uh, at the required length, or at the length that I need it. I have pre-stretched this element, which you need to do with these heating elements. Uh, but I only stretched it a very, very minimal amount, obviously, because this furnace has very limited real estate. I bought this on eBay. It's actually a 5,000 watt, 220 volt element, which means that uh, since it's purely resistive, scaling down doesn't matter. So at 110 volts, it should run about 2,500 watts, uh, which is perfect. So I can control it with my variac, um, and the reduced length does not affect my variac. I can still, I still only draw about 20 amps when this thing is hot. So anyway, um, I'm essentially going to be routing channels for the nichrome in these bricks. Um, and then there's going to be another channel that's going to basically come in through one side here, um, go around that channel, and then cut, cut across the back, go around this channel, and then go back through. And then out on the back here, this fire brick will have two holes in it, and on the back will be the terminal so I can connect the power to the heating element. Um, this whole thing will be held together by this angle steel here, which was a good idea. I got it from the instructable. Um, and you can see that uh, it's it accepts fasteners and bolts and stuff very well, so I've, I'm just going to make corners out of this stuff and then uh, use threaded rod, which I have, it's over, just off camera, but uh, I'll use threaded rod across the structure with some nuts and bolts to kind of squeeze the whole structure together, which will uh, prevent it from coming apart and lock everything solidly in place uh, while giving this a nice uh, heavy corner because uh, these bricks are very easy to damage and the corners would otherwise be very easy to dent. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting bricks and stuff here. Again, thank you all uh, for providing this stuff here, and uh, you know, I'm eternally grateful for that, and I can't wait to see how this thing turns out. So, let's get building. As you can see, the uh, furnace is coming together rather well. Um, you can see the routing of the heating element now. It just kind of goes around the back and into these channels I routed into the sides and then uh, out through two holes to bring it out the back where I can make uh, terminal connections to it. And then uh, basically all, you know, all this brick is loose. There's gaps and stuff in between. It's not quite lined up. And that's because the uh, threaded rod tensors, which you can see down there, um, they're not in on the top yet, obviously. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut that threaded rod and uh, get the top bricks on and this will be a workable furnace quite soon. Alright, so here's the product of an evening's work. Not bad for three hours, really, but uh, you know, prior planning prevents, uh, well, you know. Anyway, uh, this is made of 2600 degree fire brick, as you can see. I have routed channels for the, uh, for the heating element and you can see that they're, it's laid in place now and it just passes out through that rear brick over here. I need to uh, finish this off with some good terminals. Right now I've just got it hooked up to an old spare lamp cord hooked into my Variac. Um, I'm, I'm going to test this out really quick just to make sure that everything's okay before I finalize this, especially the terminal lugs. So I'm going to build something special for that, but uh, right now we'll leave it as is. Um, these are four and a half by two and a half by nine inch fire bricks. Uh, eventually I'm going to put a door on the front here. It's going to hinge, I'll bolt something to this, and uh, it'll be able to 
hinge either up or open, I don't really know. I kind of want to make several different doors so I can use this sort of like a tube furnace too, where I can put a hole and then uh, run a tube inside and sort of something like that. Anyway, for right now, I've got a spare fire brick. In fact, I've got three spares. Um, I can cover the hole. It works perfectly like that. So uh, I can go ahead and test to see if I can get this thing up to, you know, 1200 C or not. And uh, that's what this little test is going to be all about. Um, see the design. It's just uh, nuts, bolts, washers, well, actually nuts, threaded rod and washers. It's putting everything in tension. Yeah, there's no mortar or anything holding that together. And it's gapped off the table to prevent overheating. So anyway, I'm going to fire up the Variac and we'll see how she does. All right, I've ramped it up to 90 volts. It's uh, it's creaking and groaning, and I can see the element, I think, incandescing a little bit. Let me turn the lights off. Oh yeah, you can kind of see them. Just now, starting to glow red. The air coming out of there is stinking hot. But aside from some creaks and groans, honestly, it's not doing bad at all. What are we at, 90 volts, did I say? Yeah, 90 volts. Yeah, if the light's off, you can definitely see it's uh, red hot. I think 90 volts would be a good burnout temperature. I'm going to leave it at 90 for uh, maybe uh, 15 minutes with the brick on and see if we can get it pretty hot in there see what happens. I've been running at 90 volts for about 10 minutes now, and we can go and take a look in there and shut the light off. You might be able to see there's already glowing around the entrance. Pull the brick away, and you can see that it is <laughs> really, really hot in there. And that is perfect. That is exactly what I want from a muffle furnace. That looks to be about uh, 1400 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe. There's a few kinks to work out. Um, I think the uh, the way that the heating elements are routed through the brick in the back, you can see right there, uh, they get quite hot right there. And uh, it's not a problem for the connection really, but uh, it is a problem for the heating element. That's the hottest spot is where it passes through that brick. So what I want to do is uh, create some custom, uh, basically thick copper plugs that jam down those inside those elements, uh, which will keep the contact point uh, pretty much inside those bricks and hopefully uh, draw some heat out of that because that's going to be the failure point right there. Uh, and you can see it's like, uh, it's bright orange over here, but uh, it's not as hot as inside of the furnace. You can see there's like yellow points. Yeah, and that's not good. So I, need, I either need active cooling on that or, uh, or something. Other than that though, this is working out pretty well. I'm going to stick something in there now and see uh, how hot I can get it. All right, so I've decided to put this little crucible in the furnace with uh, a small amount of these copper chops in it. Um, copper melts at 1981 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not even sure my propane torch can do that. Um, it's really hot, it's like white hot. So it's definitely gonna put this wire through its paces. Now this wire is supposedly uh, 70 parts iron, 25 parts chromium, and five parts aluminum. So it should be able to withstand uh, something like 2700 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, again, like bright white. So I don't really actually know whether I can get to 1981 in the chamber to melt this copper or not, but hey, now's the time to find out, right? We'll break it while it's still brand new and uh, make sure that, you know, we can fix it and that it'll operate within the specifications I'd like. So if we open this up, it is incredibly hot in there. Let's see, you can feel it on my hand, it hurts. Um, yeah, so we'll just stick that in there. Ow. Oh my goodness, it's hot. Ah. The radiative heat is ridiculous. All right, and then we'll uh, close the brick up. We'll let that come up to temperature for maybe 10 minutes, and then I'll crank it up to maybe, I don't know, 100 volts or so. The wire isn't bright white inside that brick yet, so I know I'm, I haven't reached that temperature, so I guess we'll see. All right, it's been running for about a half an hour now. I don't know if the copper's melted, but... Uh, Copper melts at uh, 1,085 Celsius, by the way. That's, uh, I finally did the conversion on that. Aluminum um, melts at like 660 or something like that. Uh, the maximum service temperature of this furnace, I had intended to be 1,200 Celsius, which is a full uh, 300 degrees below the melting point of this particular alloy of resistance wire that I'm using. So anyway, uh, we should be able to get to the melting temperature of copper with it without blowing up the wire. Um, I did insert these little pieces of copper here into these electrodes and that seems to be working really well. And what that does is basically shorts out 
all of the coils that are inside that fire brick. So uh, it prevents them from carrying a whole lot of electricity and uh, thus uh, prevents them from overheating, which is good. So uh, anyway, little cracks there you can kind of see. But it's really, really, really hot in there right now. It's uh, probably uh, 900 C or something maybe. We're, we gotta be getting close. I'm gonna open up and check on it. Let me get a good view for the camera. If I turn the lights off, uh, yeah, you can see it's crazy. Let me uh, take a quick peek. Oh, I think the copper may actually start, may actually be starting to liquefy. It is incredibly hot in there. Get the lights back on. Let's see if I can get a close up. See if we can see the copper. I don't want to wreck my camera, but yeah, it might actually be starting to liquefy, which is cool. That means it's at uh, you know at least uh, 1,080 Celsius. <laughs> That's really good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and poke that uh, crucible with a glass rod and see if I can get the copper to jiggle, indicating that it might be melted. No, nope, not quite melted yet. And it's either suspected because uh, obviously I've melted copper before, well maybe not obviously, but I have melted copper before um, in a gas-fired furnace and that takes a considerable amount of heat. Uh, it's like white hot. So I'm going to turn the voltage up a little bit more and uh, let it sit for a little while more. We'll see what happens. Oh, and by the way, the fire brick is really cool actually because uh, it's insulating fire brick, of course. Obviously, otherwise you'd be wasting all your electricity, but you can see, uh, you know, it's ridiculously hot inside, but I can easily touch the outside and, uh, you know, it's no problem. It's a little toasty, but it's not, uh, not going to burn you or anything or the table. So anyway, back in a few minutes. All right, you can see how hot it is in there. I'm gonna check on the copper again, but this time I'm gonna leave the light off because I think it provides a dramatic effect. So when I open this, you see how, just how hot it is in there. It's ridiculous. Oh. Well, the copper looks like it's about to liquefy. That's good. Uh, we're running at 100 volts and uh, yeah, honestly, uh, the copper is all shiny looking, and uh, it looks like it's slumped a little bit, maybe. So I'm gonna leave it at this setting for another uh, 10 minutes, and we'll see if the copper has melted or not. Honestly, though, uh, with that temperature, I think 100 volts is the maximum safe limit uh, for this furnace because uh, otherwise, I think I'm gonna start burning the uh, element wires out. So, well, let's check out it in another 10 minutes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am here to report we have a success in melting copper. So we have reached 1100 degrees C in there, incredibly. Um, we are at uh, just about 100 volts. Terminals are holding up just fine, even with this insulated lamp cord, which is remarkable. And if you look in there, which I don't even know if you can see, it's white hot, and the copper is now a liquid puddle in the crucible. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can't even see that here, but uh, I am going to take it out and see if I can dump the copper onto something. Maybe a cup of water. Let me see what I can find. All right, well now that it looks like uh, we've reached the goal of melting copper, we have hit 1100 Celsius, um, and that is at 100 volts. It took about uh, 20 minutes after the initial pre-warm up at about uh, 80 volts, uh, or maybe it was 90 volts, I don't remember. I'll have to look at the footage. Anyway, I'm now gonna turn the power off and to prove that the copper is molten, I'm gonna drag the crucible out and attempt to pour the copper in there. Hopefully it doesn't solidify in between that time. So, power is off. Door is open. Well, that's so hot my gloves just spontaneously combusted. Let's try, uh, <clears throat> let's try pulling this out with a glass rod. There we go. Yeah, you can see how freaking hot that is. I didn't touch anything, they just spontaneously combusted by themselves, and oh, it's solidifying, but you can see the uh, copper chops are, uh, in fact, no longer chops, they are just, oh man, that's really hot, I melt my gloves. Anyway, uh, yeah, you can see it was melted into a pool, and of course it is intensely hot in that thing. <laughs> I'm going to do this to prevent uh, the thermal gradient from cracking anything. Well, that was an interesting experience. Let's uh, <laughs> I'll let that cool down. But uh, anyway, oh, holy crap, that got really close. Look, my glove is, <laughs> oops. 
I'm, that's, I'm surprised that didn't burn me. Holy cow. That's crazy. Oops. That's not at the camera. That'd be, yeah, no burns, but holy moly. Yeah, well, anyway, that got really ridiculously hot, and apparently I need new gloves and all sorts of things like that. But I'm going to leave that there for part one. Of course, uh, part two, I'll be sort of uh, improving the electrodes around the back, making them a little safer. Um, but as proof of concept, this thing definitely works. So, anyway, until then, uh, thank you very much for contributing to uh, me purchasing this, all my patrons. Thank you for donating through Patreon. If you want to help me continue this project, please uh, feel free to donate. If you can spare a dollar or something, that'd be great. Uh, I'll put the link in, uh, in the description below. Anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.